Let's start with the results. What do they tell us? So 2022 was another year of progress, in spite of be 22 being a much harder year, much more challenging, with war in Europe, inflation back, and, and many countries going through a much slower growth than we anticipated. So I'd say steady progress in all everything we guided at the beginning of the year at the group level, we delivered. Capital above 12%, cost of risk below 1%, and return on tangible equity between 13 and 14%. We ended up at 13.4%. The lesson that you draw from that about the model of the bank, the, 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 the reach of the bank, the diversification of the bank, what do, you, what do you make of that? For any business, what's important is to understand what are my competitive advantages? How can I compete better in the market? What is it that makes me different? So Santander has clear competitive strengths in scale, different to others in market scale as well as global scale. This allows us to be one of the more efficient bank in the world so we can deliver at better cost per customer, better cost to serve. Uh, very important, the network effect. So we actually can bring the know-how in different businesses across the world to each one of our core markets. A great example is the auto business in Mexico. We built from scratch in four years what today is, I believe, the second biggest auto business. There are many other examples. Very importantly, also uh, diversification. So we have a footprint that's very difficult to replicate. We have Europe and the Americas. Uh, again, this gives us resilience through the cycle. These countries are not all you know, growing faster at the same time. Sometimes they grow more or less. And so this allows us to be the best performing bank under stress as a group in Europe, one of the best. You've talked a lot before about your relationship, Santander's relationship with customers. What do these results tell us about the way in which the bank's relationships with customers are changing? So at the end of the day, the, the, the proof is in the pudding. If, if, you, if you attract more customers, it means you're doing something right. And so Santander attracted 7 million new customers last year. Uh, this allowed us to grow revenues double digit. This allowed the growth in profitability and profits in a year that it was not easy. And of course, customers, you know, most of our customers actually transact with us through digital channels today. And again, what's important is that customers continue to join us and that hopefully very few leave us, you know, and this is really at the end how you prove that your model works and that customers still find your products and services more attractive than others. In this difficult year, Anna, what's the message to customers? The message is we're here for you. The message is we have been part of the solution. We want to help you grow. We want to help you succeed. We know it's hard. We know that inflation is hurting many of you. We're ready to help. Uh, and the way we're going to help is by simplifying the model, making it easier for you to work with us. And in the same way we've done in the past few years, be there to help you finance your dreams. And it's going to be another challenging, challenging year for many of you because of inflation. And Santander, again, will be there for you. And what do you think of the outlook for 2023? I can't remember a time when you get business leaders who are, if you like, in such different moods. You've got some really pessimistic ones who are very much retrenchment, and then you've got some quite optimistic ones who think this is a pivot year. Where are you? Well, it's a pivot year. Actually, 22 has been a pivot year. Okay, so, so I think in 22 we are entering a new decade very different from the previous decade, not just because of the war in Europe, inflation, everything that that means for businesses. There will be some businesses, and I think ours is one of them, that will actually perform better. Uh, we have been going through what was a very unusual and not healthy period of negative interest rates. If money is free, then you're going to make investments that you shouldn't be making. And so there is excesses in the economy. That's another story. Uh, but, but I think banks like Santander that have a proven business model, that have been improving operationally, that have delivered pretty good returns with negative rates, you know, with normalizing rates. By the way, 2 3% rates are not extraordinarily high. We've seen much higher rates uh, in the past. And so I think we will do much better uh, as an industry. So when you look back at 2022, what's the thing that you're most proud of and what is left at the top of the to-do list for 2023? I am most proud that we have been able to deliver for our people, for our customers, for our shareholders and our communities. Importantly, we are here for our shareholders. And so again, we're delivering 23% earnings per share growth, all of that with capital above 12. I mean, getting all of these aligned is not easy. Uh, so what is it we need to do for 23? First, you know, I've always, and my team and I have always been very proud of under promise and over deliver. We need to continue delivering on what the 
investors want. So again, the how and the what, I think the how we're delivering the numbers and you know, what we're doing for customers, communities is there, but we have to continue delivering for shareholders. And I believe that the plans we've put in place and the guidance we've given already for 2023, which is to have a return on tangible equity above 15%, a cost of risk below 1.2, and a cost income, between, cost income between 44 and 45, and growing revenues. I mean, that again is a very ambitious set of goals for this year. If there's one thing we need to accelerate, uh, and, and one thing that companies like ours need to get right is culture, mm. is attitudes, is how we think about transforming the business, even though you know, higher rates and normalization of rates is actually gonna help us to have a business model that is better, but at the end, the transformation is key. So really delivering on that transformation and getting the culture we need for that transformation. If you're working for Santander and you look at these you know, enormous numbers and think, well, personally, what can I do in 2023? What's the answer? What really matters is that we work as one Santander. So we have huge competitive advantages of scale, as I said, in market, global scale. But what matters is that the network effects of us really leveraging the Santander network, that depends on each one of us working together and understanding that most of the time, maybe not all the time, what's good for the group is good for me. My message to the team is very clear. First, I'm hugely proud of you all. What we have delivered this year is, again, uh, great results in the right way for all our stakeholders, so well done to all. But very importantly, you know, I'm very confident that we are on track to be even better in the next year and the next few years. So you, know, you can be confident that our model is working, you can be confident that we have the plans, and you can be confident that under Hector and I together, with all of you, we'll deliver another great year in 2023. And if you're a customer of Santander, and you're looking out at the beginning of 2023 at a very uncertain year, what do you hope Santander will be able to do for you? In the last few years, as we think about customers, we have really done incredibly well for, for the top end, for the corporate investment bank. We have built a great horizontal business in private banking, asset management, insurance. Uh, we are building a great payments business where you know, we can be one of the world leaders and that's delivering already results, where we really need to get the business to the next level is in individuals. That is obviously a bigger part, the biggest part of the 160 million. And there the key word is simplification. And this is what customers want. They want simple products that work brilliantly, that are easy to use, competitive prices, many times very low prices, anytime they want on the app. They want to be able to open an account in three minutes. They want to be able to make payments with one click. I think that's where we need, and we have a plan, we have a very, very good plan, but I think that is the big challenge going forward. How do we deliver simplification so customers can have the best experience, pricing and everything at the same time, which is what customers want today. They want us to deliver on all the, all the fronts. And what do you say to people who look at the results and say, yes, we see those eight years of consistent growth, we see record profitability, we don't understand why that's not reflected in the share price. You know, through the cycle, we managed the bank to deliver growth in our tangible uh, net asset value per share and in dividend per share, so cash dividend per share. So this is really how much the business is worth and how much I'm giving you back as a shareholder. And what's important is that, again, every year we have continued to make progress there. And the second most important thing is that every year we have built capital and every year, with the exception of COVID, for eight years, we have grown our profits steadily. What matters is that we are more profitable each year and that our profits are sustainable. These are the two key things. And we're doing that with more capital every year, but we are at the level of capital we want to be. So we are above 12% every quarter in 22, and we are at the 12% level that has been and continues to be our target. And what do you think about climate and the climate challenge. So Santander has some global strengths and one of them is that we have been leaders in financing the green transition, energy transition for 15 years. We're top three in the world. So we, uh, we, we understand that uh, area of growth. Banks are leading but we need governments also to help us. We cannot do this alone. We need to think about a trans energy transition that's 
not just clean, but affordable and secure. We need to think not just about London and Madrid and New York. We need to think about Africa, Brazil. We need to think not just about the big companies, but about the smaller companies and people that are buying their first home in many countries, and they need a transition. So we need to help the world transition in energy, and this means collaboration between banks, companies, people, but also governments. Annabelle Team, thank you very much.